Hello oh. Before we begin the video, let's discuss Cloud Foundation. Cloud Foundation is the premier online training platform to help individuals and organizations gain knowledge and skills in the ever-growing cloud computing industry. So now is dynamic piece. You're talking right. So yeah. So let's say, if I, as soon as I select a customer, let me go to the next page itself, right? So let's say, if I try to create a new sales order here right now, here I have this field called customer right. So let's say, if I select it as XYZ, there is some customer XYZ. Okay, now, as soon as you select it, it will, the page will refresh and it will select the department and subsidiary on its own. So I think it takes some. It takes a few seconds. I selected the customer. You see subsidiaries auto-populated right. Location is also auto-populated. These are source field, basically right. So now, when you, when you say is dynamic true, which means you can, you can put or enter any or set these field values in any manner, it doesn't it not. Not it not, it need not to be the sequential manner. Let's say, if I, if I'm doing the sales order creation in the script, I say record.create for sales order. And then I enter the subsidiary value first, and then I enter. The customer does not matter. Because the script will treat it in a similar way until unless we put the right subsidiary and right customer. Obviously the combination has to match, but it will not create any issues. But when you say is dynamic false, which means it has to be there or entered in a sequential manner, the way that it accepts it. So most of the time when you're working on the script you will have is dynamic. True, because we generally, you know, set the field values as we remember it and we don't really have to follow the sequential cases. But I, you know, I think very rarely you will find you will, you know, come, come to a situation where you need to actually follow the sequential manner. Okay, okay, so let me save this, so the training folder and I'll I now what we need, what we do go to customization scripting script new. So or before that, the first step is to go to document files. Sweet, sweet script, this folder. Right. So any, any script you work or you create, we have to put it in this folder called Sweet Script, so that it can, it can be used, and we can create a script record here. So this is what this is, a predefined form directory. We have to put all the files here we want. We can inside Sweet Script. You can create an additional folders you want, but the main, main folder has to be Sweet Folder. So let's say, if I add the file here, I've added the file here. Now I go to here, go to this page. I say SP and the for you. Yeah, this is my script name. It came here. I click on create script record. See now you see it or naturally does define or understood that it has a user event script type based on the internal description. 
and then we it has already understood that the API version is 2.0. So this has come on its own. We haven't defined that separately. Now let's say I say it is the user event, that customer is the UE and I save it. You can give any name and label the. I mean, this name does not matter, but this ID has to be unique. If you don't give any ID, NetSuite will generate some ID on its own. Again, it will be unique. So whenever you're giving any script ID, you know better to give your own ID so that you remember it, and you it is easier to deploy to other instances as well and it has to be unique. Again, the thing is let me try to put it here. So we have custom script. So that's the keyword. Which will all which will be append or prefixed in all the script you create, right? This will be added by NetSuite itself in the ID. So the best practice or the right practice to define your ID, that you define the name or start the ID value with underscore and then your or any name, right. So now, what we have defined here is this value. Now, when you save it, it will become something like this custom script, and then the value that will become like this custom script will be added by NetSuite itself, and then you have this value what we have entered. This will become the actual. Now best practice is to define this ID as first thing you define as the company. Some sort of aliases for the company or the organization name. Let's say, if I have the company name as ABC Corporation, then I'll put ABC and then the script type. So script type, CL is for client script, UE is for user event. Okay, schedule script is for SSS, for schedule script. Then you have MR is for MapReduce. Then you have SuiteLit. SU is for SuiteLit. Then what else you have? Mass update is MU, that is for mass update. Did I miss anything? Then we have a reflay is for we put it as reflay, script RS, which is reflay. So these sort of this is a generic naming convention you'll see across all organizations. So we dash. The best practice is to put the company alias in like two letters or three letters max, and then you put the script type, which is, let's say, in this case, UE, and then some description about what you're doing in the script. So we just, we're just testing something. I'll put it as test. But let's say, if you're creating a field sort of, for that matter, so I'll put it as create. So, so that becomes the ID, and you have to make sure that it is, I mean, the minimum, maximum. Character limit is 30. So we'll have to make sure that it is within 30 characters. I mean, even if you try to do it, naturally will not accept it. So yeah, now I have created the script, I will just save it, okay. So as soon as you save it, you will see all three function names are here and all three are checked, because we are using all three functions here. These are all. These are all the functions and user event, and all three are checked because we're using all of them. Now this is the part where you define or create a script record in the field, and then next step is to deploy that script to a particular record. Yeah, 
So compilation happens as soon as we, you know. You remember, after uploading the script, we click, we select the file name, and then click on Create Script Record. It happens that it happens at that time if there are any compilation errors. So an error there, there and there. Again, this is a user event script type. So it's script. User event script is generate, deployed to a particular record. So when I click deploy, you'll see. When I click on deploy record, you see the list of applies to which means which it is a record. List of record types. So in this case, we are testing it to customer record. So I'll deploy it to the customer record and I'll put some test ID again here. Now deployed checkbox should be checked, which means if you uncheck it, it will, it will. It will be undeployed, right? So this is check. Now status is testing. So there are two values, which is testing and release. Testing means you are. This will be deployed, but only to your user, the user who is deploying it, right? And when you say release, it will be released to the entire instance. Here we define, here we are mapping it. I mean, obviously, when you're writing the script, you are doing everything here, right? We customer? I mean, we understand that we are writing entire logic on the, on the customer record. So that's how we write the entire logic. Because this field, called food field, called category field, called sales rep, it is not available on any other record write. It is available for customer. So we know we are writing this script for customer. Here it is we are. We are selecting the right record type, OK. OK, now here also this is something which is recently released. We have the list of event type available on the deployment page. Also, let's say, if you don't select the event type in the script, Let's say you do right now, we have this large condition right, that even type with anything other than create, then only it will run. Additionally, if you don't want to put that logic here on the script, you can select the event type from here. Also, let's say, if I want the script only to run at 3, I will set it as great. Okay, so this is something which was, I think, introduced in last and finally do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel.